I think fundamentally it all comes down to like the systems and structures we live within. You know, we all are trapped in this economic structure at the moment. We're trapped in a carbon structure. You know, I mean, even what we do every day. Let's 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 be brutally honest. You know, we all go to work and we do things that's reliant on on those 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 things. It's not straightforward. What I do do think is is I think that that there is a paralysis sometimes with with government because of that because you know the, the change is that we need a pretty dramatic because it will cost some jobs and industries in fossil fuels in damaging industries but it has to be presented as creating the new opportunities you know you know renewable sustainable businesses you know the benefits we're going to get out of you know really highly protecting big parts of our world and and taking the public on a new journey through that um and people probably do also need to talk about of course western consumption levels which are absolutely unsustainable you're listening to the spaceship earth podcast with me dan burgess The concept of the spaceship Earth is simple. We live on a life-giving rock called Earth, hurtling through space. Like a spaceship, we have a finite amount of supplies with an intelligent operating system, which keeps everything we need replenished as long as we all respect it and use wisely. So an understanding of how this system works, along with deep cooperation between humans and all life, is essential to keep us thriving and the spaceship flying. In this podcast, I'm in conversation with humans involved in regenerating life, shifting consciousness and reimagining how we can live more beautifully and peacefully. I talk with artists, activists, writers, designers, adventurers, healers, entrepreneurs, creative mavericks and more. Their stories invite us to participate in the co-creation of a more beautiful, life-sustaining world in service to life, becoming crew on Spaceship Earth. Hello, welcome to the podcast. This is Dan. Hope this finds you well, wherever you are on Spaceship Earth. Uh, In this episode, I'm in conversation with Hugo Tagholm. Now, if you don't know Hugo, uh, you're in for a bit of a treat. Hugo is CEO of environmental surf charity Surfers Against Sewage. Now, he is a true force of nature. Uh, an incredible campaigner uh, and human in service to our ocean and rivers and dedicated to the protection and regeneration of life on our home planet. Hugo's work takes him uh, to multiple places from the coastlines, uh, working with communities and activists, to the boardrooms of business where he campaigns for systemic change uh, from polluting corporations whether that's our uh, water companies and and waterways and sewage treatment through to plastic pollution uh, and right into Westminster where he regularly uh, speaks directly to political power and now Hugo's story is well documented in many podcasts and so when I caught up with Hugo it was at his HQ in Cornwall it was the day after the C7 event uh, from Finisterre, which you can uh, check in on in episode 51. Uh, that was on the eve of the G7 world leader uh, gathering in Cornwall. Uh, and we decided to focus this conversation right into this moment in time, you know, where we're basically facing into these kind of inextricable intersectional crises, uh, whether that's the crisis of the pandemic, the inequalities that we're seeing everywhere. And obviously the mother of all, the climate and ecological emergency. So this conversation, we get stuck into the realities, the uncomfortable realities of these times and these enormous challenges. Uh, The stuckness, if you like, of our political and economic systems. This is a passionate and energetic conversation. uh, And we covered a lot of ground. Hugo speaks of this being the ocean decade as we talk why these next 10 years will be the most critical in the human story to date. We talk about the impacts of the pandemic on the work of Surfers Against Sewage, the rise of hybrid activism on and offline, building more diverse activism everywhere, 
uh, the youth voice and how to centre that in our work. The never-ending plastics pollution that has increased again through the pandemic. The urgency to stop putting so much toxic waste and pollution into our natural systems to radically slow down what we take from the natural world to rewild at scale. We talk about the uncomfortable reality of what sits hidden underneath our predominantly Western, comfortable and convenient consumer-led ways of living. The destruction of nature and ecosystems through continued extraction and pollution and the rise in global temperatures, but also the misery of millions who are in awful work conditions to serve and keep this system that serves us in place. Again, a thread in this conversation that's so alive for me in my work is that planetary health and human health are intimately entangled. We also explore the hope and possibilities of co-creating a world beyond what we can imagine today, where humans and the non-human world can thrive. But ultimately, we need everyone to make noise, take action and resist these destructive systems. We have to say enough of this. This decade is it. It's us on our watch. So let's all get to work. Hugo is, in my opinion, a very rare breed. He's someone who models so many of the qualities we need in buckets right now. He has a wildness from his deep relationship with the ocean and the natural world. He mobilises and helps enable and support community-led participation in change. He has vision for how we can evolve and has enormous courage and energy to influence both business and politics in the transformative shifts we must make for the sake of all future life. Hugo is a radical human and activist and for me is an inspirational crew member on Spaceship Earth. So let's cut to it. This is the Spaceship Earth podcast with Hugo Tagom from Surface Against Sewage. Enjoy. Hugo, welcome to the Spaceship Earth podcast. Thank you, Dan. And uh, I'm here in your hood, which is... Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, quite, uh, it's quite rare, actually, after the last, whatever it's been, 16 months. Yeah, it's been you know, great to have you down here. And you, it's sort of a, this transitional point in society. Um, you know, of course, we were here for the, you know, the C7 yesterday That's um, right. and it felt like the first sort of new world um sort of event you know people without masks people actually you know being sort of more tactile whether that's sort of dangerous or not at this stage but um but it was good you know and people need that people need that human contact and um for all of the the huge sort of um changes we've seen through the pandemic and this sort of digital world we've all assumed is very productive and brilliant I think there's been a real toxicity to that um, that that assumption and that digital world, and it's 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 separated people. It's been divisive and it's been unhealthy. Um, yeah. And I think people need people, and they need to be able to look them in the eyes and understand their emotions, understand what they want, understand how they feel, and uh, and create change together. Because ultimately, we're all you know trying to push in 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 a good direction. And yeah. We're in a, an amazing decade, the ocean decade, to do that. And this decade that, for, in my opinion, is going to be this this quite a revolutionary, the most radical decade of environmental action the world probably has ever or will ever see. I right. Think it, it, our backs are in, against the wall. We, we have to make change and we see the, the sort of the, the, the stakeholders aligning. Um, yeah. So yeah, we, we jump in at the deep end there, but yeah, <laughs> you know, we're, we're like, um, yeah, here, here in, you know, you can see we're in an SAS HQ. Yeah. I've got, I've got third, well, uh, examples of 30 years of pipeline magazine, our members magazine behind us, um, a wooden sustainable surfboard from James Otter behind you um, and people beetling around as we prepare the office um, ready for people to come back together. Yeah. And um, as I see them starting to come in and do things together, I just see this excitement of, of that social contact of that collaboration of that energy that is going to deliver the, the results for this, um, for this organization and collectively across the country and the world the changes we need to see um, happen as we emerge from this, you know, terrible pandemic. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it was it was interesting last night, uh, actually at the end when, the, you know, the, we'd had the music and and people just like, actually a lot of chat outside was, God, you know, just seeing some live music and felt so amazing, you know, and just to sort of have some energy of that, of that connection going on. And, and uh, it struck me particularly with, with, um, 
thinking about you and your work here as an organisation because I I can remember sort of pre-lockdown, you know, when I sort of follow you, follow your travels and your uh, mm. your adventure. And you, you know, you're always on the move. Yeah. Right? You're someone yeah. that was, you know, you seem to be yeah. up and down, particularly up to London and to Parliament. And yeah. um, what, what was it been like? What was it like um, the last year? Like as an organisation, it's just for yourself and as an organisation to have that sudden, that mm. big, big shift. Can you just share a bit about that? Yeah, well, look, I mean, I mean, it's been, you know, pre-pandemic, I'd be in London a couple of days a week, maybe elsewhere. You know, I'd have a lot of travels to, to places to do talks and meet people. And it, it was sort of good and it was exhausting in, in many ways. And then, and then my last one, actually, I went to do a big conference out in the States um, in um, the end of January 2020. Came back and then we had our 30th anniversary celebration on the, in February um, and we had we announced Prince Charles and Prince Charles came as our, our patron, which is it's sort of this unusual sort of, you know, as it were, bedfellow in, in some ways. But like, you know, a, a person who, um, you know, whether you like the monarchy or not, a person who has been committed to environmental action for many decades um, and been championing it. So like quite a quite a sort of cool thing and a former surfer, actually. Mm. Um, and so that was really sort of cool. And then literally days after the country was in lockdown, I, I was coming back from the States going, Oh my god, this this might not happen. I could we could see the the whole world starting to shift on its axis. Um, I, I expected a call any second saying that this isn't going to happen now. Um, but we snuck under the radar, and it was his last handshake event. It was his last, um, you know, um, sort of in person event for a, a long time. And um, and it was interesting. And for me, it meant I got a lot. You know, got locked down in in Cornwall. Um, and it was good. I could spend more time with my wife and my son, um, with my son Darwin, who's who's 13 now and he's in these sort of formative years, really getting into surfing. So we've surfed, you know, a lot when we can. Um, but it was weird, you know, the beginning for all of us. I mean, I remember talking to Tom, Tom K from Finisterre, you know, literally the day we got locked down, we sat on the bench outside and it was like, are we, are we screwed basically? Mm. Are we all screwed with this? Is, our, is everything we're doing going to, going to fold? Um, but actually, no, we've got, we've got stronger. We've learned a lot. I think actually, in a way, we, we've, we've made business decisions, Finisterre and ourselves, that have helped us you know, strengthen during this period. We've had more impact on our campaigns. We've connected with more people. Um, but I do remember those fearful first days. I remember going outside my, my front door. It's a beautiful, beautiful weather in that first lockdown. And I remember going on walks every morning with Sarah and Darwin. Um, and literally, we'd just, even if we just went onto our street to play Frisbee, we'd come in and we'd like, all like wash our hands like 10 times and and sometimes you thought you'd like literally keel over with the that's bubonic right, plague that's right you know and and it, it sort of it's interesting that 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 degree of sort of fear and uncertainty that came with that first first wave um sort of it's in a way with the second when we the, the second variant here as well but i think now we're starting to like normalize things start to look at the different levels of risk for different you know for different you know age groups for different people you know, start to understand how we interact without exposing ourselves to too much, like danger. You know, you know whether it's you know just a little bit more distance between people, a bit more ventilation. You know, being more conscious of washing your hands when you've been you know out and about. But you know, this is an airborne disease that thrives when you're in packed rooms close together. And thankfully, in Cornwall, particularly during this this sort of time of year, you know, we're in the summertime now. You know, you're outside a lot. You're surfing, you're, you're, you're interacting with people sort of at distance, really generally, even if you're going to the pub, you're sitting in a beer garden, you know, I think the risk is much lower. And, and what, um, because I guess like, you know, when you, when I think of surfers against sewage, it, personally, I, I always, you know, I see an organization that's always got a huge amount of energy mm. around what it does, powered by people. Yeah. Um, and Again, I know there's a lot. There's a lot goes on in your work, but the, the things that always stand out for me is that you always have, for me, these two dimensions. One is like you have a very, very sort of razor kind of focus on the shifts you're trying to make, yep. policies you're trying to change mm -hmm. or or bring in, and then you have this kind of mobilising, yeah, um, mobilising people mm -hmm. on the ground to actually create that noise, that engagement, and put that pressure on yep. on the issue. And what was that been like then? Because I guess in this time where that hasn't been possible to sort of operate with yeah. that kind of, a, how's that been? I mean, what, what did that throw up for you guys? And how did you, you know, what did you learn through having to kind of, you know, not be able to kind of mobilize in that way? It's just interesting. Yeah. yeah. You know, interesting. And it's sort of a journey of, of, of discovery really. And we're so well known for bringing people together in, 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 you know, in, in 
you know physical natural spaces so you know whether it's at beach cleans or a campaign demos and actions um sort of citizen science projects like our brand audit all of those things and so when the pandemic hit we suddenly couldn't we couldn't do that um but we we adapted just as we you know we went i mean whatever 15 months ago we none of us really knew what teams was um we probably use zoom occasionally <laughs> um and we, we were pro- quite phobic of those things i think collectively you know some some people who had adopted them early but but now they're they're just familiar currency it's, it's what we, we do and they're, they're part of our everyday lives um and so we we did the same with with our actions and we tried to digitize things we gave people the chance to take action from home we engaged them in different ways we asked them what they thought what they were struggling with the issues that they you know, uh, wanted to take action on how they wanted to take action on us, what they were missing because of the pandemic. And that gave us quite a lot of um, information. It gave us some really good insights into, you know, how people wanted to do things with us, Um, you know, particularly in that, you know, first lockdown. And then, you know, we started to do sort of digital actions through social media um, and, uh, you know, build build a a new way of working with people. And, And the thing was is, as we disconnected in terms of those live events, we were actually really connected with other ways of giving their, you know, amplifying their voices. So we were bringing lots of, you know, quite, um, you know, important politicians and change makers into meetings we were organizing online. It was easier to access people from around the world because, you know, there's no travel, you know, there's no uh, cost to it. And so when you're inviting, um, you know, quite senior, you know, um, you know, people into your meetings, they invariably could come. Mm. And so I think there were, there were, there were losses and gains. Um, there was a new understanding that we got, but, um, but some of the sheen has come off that digital world. Now, I think people are tired, tired of it. Mm. Um, I think it's not always as effective as people assume. It means certainly individually, personally, I think we're all exposed to what I'd sort of loosely describe as an always on, culture of working Mm. you know it it, it literally your your office sits in your room and in your pocket yeah it's there like winking at you going you can do a bit more you know you're you're sort of as it were your boss is always in the room yeah and that that's that's challenging for people and it's not not healthy and it's i'm looking forward to a healthier mix of coming back we want to bring people together we're starting to do that we've just had our million mile beach clean we've had seventy thousand people or so out on beaches over the last few weeks um they've done i think they've committed to or done like seven hundred thousand miles collectively of wow. beach cleaning um you know, really exciting stuff bringing the team back together um is is really exciting and seeing people you know in 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 the flesh is is good um and you know i'm looking forward to the the sort of the the, the hybrid world where we're doing both things mm. where we're doing all of those actions and activities where people can work more flexibly um and uh, where we can create sort of activism more flexibly digital you know, out there in the field, you know, collecting evidence, bringing people together for rallies, like, you know, the thing we're going to do this weekend, the paddle out protest for G7, expecting maybe a thousand people to join us in the water um, this Saturday, yeah, tomorrow morning. Um, so like really, um, you know, a, a blend of those things. I think we, we, we live in an age where you've got to try and, you know, you've got to build a vehicle that, that, you know, that, that can bring everyone along with you. It's, it's vital in this ocean decker. We bring as many people along on this 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 journey with us as we can that diversity is so important just like in you know ecosystems um you need all of these different specialists and ideas to to create the strength and it's the same in the campaigning and the 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 human society ecosystem um and and this is particularly important now um and we're seeing all sorts of new stakeholders come to us um and sometimes it's those unusual bedfellows like you know having a royal patron yeah, they're really important. So you know, and that that goes from from Prince Charles through to the young activists, the youth leaders. You know, and and you know, th- we had a, our Youth Ocean and Climate Summit a few days ago. You know, amazing people, inspirational people, new ideas, new blood from different parts of the country, from inner cities, from from different regions of the country, all coming in with energy and not and not saying, oh, we're gonna we're gonna take on the mantle, the challenge of cleaning up the mess that you've all created. Mm. But what they're saying is. We need you to clean up the mess you're creating now because we want a cleaner future mm. for our adulthood. You know, and that's the thing. And I, I often find that, um, you know, people patronize these young people um, through sort of education programs. Oh, you're, it's going to be brilliant. You're going to, one day you'll be prime minister and you'll be able to fix all of this mess. And it's like, no, they're, they're not saying that at all. They're saying, this is, this is terrible what you're doing and you've got to stop it now. Mm. And we want change. So the G7, COP26 this year, the ocean decade, what an opportunity to do that together and build campaigns on plastics climate biodiversity 
and inclusivity. It's like um, it, there's there's a lot there's a lot here, and as we, I want to get into the climate piece in in a set, but let's just go. It says you because service against sewage. I mean, you've because this high idea of kind of dealing with the mess, right? Yeah. I, in in some ways, that's sort of like that was the sort of you know when you were founded, right? It yeah. was it was sewage. It yeah. was it was you know pouring into the oceans, yeah. and and there was this kind of like um, you know very i mean the you know the way you organized and the uh, way you brought attention yeah. punching way above your weight always in 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 bringing attention to these issues and and you worked on um the sewage problem of course that's still a problem right yeah. as we know and um, yeah. um you know and then there's been the plastics issue mm -hmm. which you know you've been you know spearheading for for years um and now i get so i guess there's these you know it's these constant problems of pollution and waste mm. and you know a system that is not able to deal with it all and 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 yeah as i said but we get to that point where it's almost like um you know when when, when do we actually you know when do we go beyond sort of clearing up the waste if you yeah. like and to actually yeah. you know, why is this stuff happening mm -hmm. and i think it's really interesting that you've had these kind of single issue campaigns yeah um over the years um and now as we're moving into this as you say this this critical 10 years and more people are waking up maybe um becoming aware mm -hmm. educating themselves mm -hmm. into the role specifically of the ocean and yeah. you know, that it is this it is the, the 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 main driving life support system on earth yeah we've, we've kind of grown up in a in a way where we've sort of you know we see land as our dominant kind of yeah. thing because we live on it but I think for many of us, we, we, I mean, even, even things like the role of, you know, even the every second breath yeah. uh, fact, it still blows people's yeah. minds. Uh, yeah. It's still not a common thing that yeah. people are aware of. So I guess it's like, you know, you've been raising the alarm bells for years mm -hmm. because, and I guess, you know, as surfers and, and people spending mm -hmm. time in the water and on the coast, you know, we see it, right? We've yeah. seen it for years. You, yeah. you see the interconnectedness. You see this, yeah. this stuff. You can't hide it. So you've been raising the alarm bells, then you're looking into how to shift policies. But now in, in this time, and, you know, when we think about the youngsters that you're talking of, it's, you know, it's one thing to clear up the mess, but how do we actually, you know, this shift to actually this redesign of a system? Of course, now that's not your work, but increasingly it feels like we're, we're, we're needing to be able to sort of create the space for these different yeah. ways of, do you know what I mean, coming in? Because... How Absolutely. long can we can, can we just keep making noise? Sorry, that was a, that was a bit of a rambly. Uh, no, I, li <laughs> I like it. You know, and I, I think it's 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 a really good point. And 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 you know, taking it through the sort of prism of 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 some of these, you know, uh, as it were, granular issues. You know, whether it's sort of sewage or or, or plastics. You know, you know, they're, they're, they they they've been huge campaigns, and they they remain huge campaigns. You know, they're they're a big part, and they're very complicated things. You know, um, you know, still the sewage. I mean, the sewage problem of the nineteen nineties has been sort of altered and solved in some ways and we're, we're we're sort of proud of the work that has been done you know with surface against sewage to contribute to that but the, the truth of the matter is, is in a way some stuff has been shifted around last year 3.1 million hours of sewage went into the into uk rivers um that's eight and a half thousand hours every day and only 14 percent of our rivers meet good ecological status um you know we've seen a pandemic where plastic pollution has you know has sort of risen again and yeah. the government's sort of commitment for change in legislation and policy to you know as it were trap plastic in the economy rather than in the ocean have slowed down you know endless consultations oh we need more evidence to make a decision you go oh there's plenty of evidence yeah you know, you're just you're just not actually reading it and listening to it and acting on it and you know this is this is the decade of action and you know to your point you know look i agree i think really what we're talking about is is wild nature now mm -hmm. and that's that's the central place we, we need to create a decade where that wild nature um in its you know natural state can can come back and thrive um you know people are talking about planting the right trees in the right places people are talking about blue carbon habitats kelp forests and seagrass meadows and salt marshes which are vital for biodiversity and sequ uh, sequestration of, of carbon you know we're talking about um highly protected marine areas that can let you know, biomass increase and biodiversity increase and let big, you know, big fish come back, and big mammals come back, all of those things create the right conditions. And the two points you made were, you know, we, we've worked a lot on the sort of the pollution inputs, water companies, plastic companies, you know, 
companies producing toxic chemicals that are putting into these ecosystems. Now we're dealing with the big industry taking out some of these ecosystems. So those dual mm. pressures. And this decade needs to be a decade where I say we, we can't have either of those things. We need really tight regulation on the on the shit we're pumping into the right. I- into the environment. And we need to we need to stop people taking so much out of the environment. Because, you know, fundamentally it's all very well for short term game. But if we carry on doing that, we, we're screwed. You know, yeah. we know that. Um, and so, so this has to be a really radical new decade of thinking. This is what people are saying, you know, 30 by 30, 30% of our land and sea, like really highly protected. You know, we've got to scrap industrial fishing, hoovering up every last, um, every last minnow from the, uh, from the ocean. We've got to, you know, we've got to tackle, you know, the big companies that are getting away without paying any taxes and, and damaging the environment, you know, right, left and centre um, at the expense of our children and our children's children. And all of, the, all of those things sort of need to happen. And it is up to government now, particularly at G7 down the road. We've got Joe Biden's probably, what, 20 miles from yeah. us at the moment, um, chatting to Boris Johnson over a cream tea. <laughs> but it, it's really important that their actions and their rhetoric now turn into action. And not just action, you know, that, that they, they promote as a new solution in the paper, but action that the public can see the impacts of. You know, people want to see nature taking hold again. They need to see those examples. They need to see the, 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 the thriving ecosystems that come back as a result of policy and legislation. And potentially the, the sort of the radical things that might seem inconceivable at some stages to government, like banning some industries that are doing so much damage. I mean, we've come through a time these last 15 months when we've been told and we, we've been told that we can't hug our friends and family. We can't hug our parents. We right. can't go into our parents' houses. If I told you that 18 months ago, you would have said, that will never happen. Yeah, sure. No one will ever control me yeah. like that. So when the government says, oh, you know, actually, I think that the public like Kinder Egg toys and we've got to keep them because we can't get rid of them because it would be too much. You go, no, yeah, not nonsense. at all. You know, and so there's things, you know, that's a, you know, a, a stupid example maybe, but there are things that, you know, they think that the public can't do without, but it's just, it's marketeers that make, make the public, you know, sort of, create that public appetite and actually we can go no we're just not going to have that just as you know whaling whaling was curtailed when they found oil ironically um um, and then whaling you know whaling got banned i mean of course some countries are doing it but that moratorium and that drive has has let some whale populations come back you know in in a good way and so so i I think we just got to look at this you know what is not working on planet and and so what what should we do differently let's look at the evidence let's listen to the science and let's make it happen this decade mm. is that is that it's a great line isn't it you know the uh the stone age didn't end because we ran out of stones but, no um, yeah um, yeah you, exactly do you, i mean do you on that because i guess that's the thing so if we thought of if we thought of the ocean and the earth and the living world as a as a living thing um you know we would look at it now for, if we were you know if we were coming at it from a medical or science perspective which we you know we are and we would go this 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 thing is is sick, right? Yeah. This temperature's rising. Yeah. It's got fever. Yeah. Um. It's infection. It's infected. Yeah. It's losing its antibodies. Yeah. Its ability to mm-hmm. respond to these yeah. things. Um. And and you know if if that was a if that was a human, you'd be told you know you have to stop putting this stuff into your yeah. system. You have to start that you're going to die. You know. Yeah. And so, do you think world leaders? Do you do you really? Because I I'm always in this thing. Do you, I mean you have you've had you know you have a lot of uh, a lot of engagement with with government in this country yeah. particularly and stuff do you do you think they grasp the the real urgency or do you think there's still a a sense of um you know man dominates nature mm. we'll we'll evolve our way out of that and i know it's a hard question to say but because I, I what i don't understand is is if you know we have scientists screaming this at us now mm. you know we, i mean it's so clear to most people we have school children yeah bewildered mm. um what is it because like you say that whole thing of like you know it, overnight we can stop people from mm. hugging but we can't say do you know what we're going to finance the hospicing now of these sectors yeah. right and we're going to help them transition to other things mm. but now it's just enough we've got to, i mean yeah. for me you know that's the bit i'm still i just can't yeah. grasp what's going on <laughs> well look uh, look uh, uh, uh. I agree. I mean, how they can like rush through these laws that curtail all of our personal freedoms, you know, within like days. Yet they drag their heels on on bringing in a law to you know stop plastic bottles ending up right. in the ocean. I mean, or, how much has that been you know, going on for? You've been. It's gone up, we, I mean, we've campaigned really hard on it since um, twenty sixteen. You know, so so the deposit return scheme. Yeah, what happened with that, I thought that was yeah. Well, it's meant to be now coming in in twenty twenty four. 
to like almost the, like a decade later, halfway through the decade of ecosystem restoration. I think we're talking, you know, I don't know how many tens of billions of bottles will end up in the environment as a result of that, that, that like he, uh, you know, foot dragging, but you know, so many more. And it's like, you know, sort of why, and that's big industry, you know, you know, throwing spanners in the works wherever it can, you know, they don't want to pay for it. It means that they make less money, you know, the thing. And, you know, I think fundamentally it all comes down to like the systems and structures we live mm. within. You know, mm. we all are trapped in this economic structure at the moment. Mm. We're trapped in a carbon structure. You know, I mean, even what we do every day, let's, let's, let's be brutally honest. You know, we all go to work and we do things that's reliant on, on those, those, those things, you know? Yeah. And it's not, it's not straightforward. Um, but, but what I do, do think is, is I think that, that there is a paralysis sometimes with with government because of that because you know the the changes that we need are pretty dramatic um and it will probably cost some jobs and industries it will cost some jobs and industries in fossil fuels in damaging industries but it has to be presented as creating the new opportunities right. you know you know renewable sustainable businesses you know the benefits we're going to get out of you know really highly protecting big parts of our world and and taking the public on a new journey through that um and people probably do also need to talk about of course western consumption levels which are of course absolutely unsustainable and um and western sort of populations and you know the number of people expecting that sort of that lifestyle you know including ourselves you know and what we consume what we buy what we eat all of those all of those things um but um but i do feel this decade um and, and what i've seen is you know like even not even sort of three or four years ago where i was seeing this is the alignment between sort of political business and public thinking something i've never sort of seen before like you know people do know there's a there's a crisis people do know there's a there's an emergency you know the the you know the processes that are going on are you know, looking to build the right toolkit, you know, and that's from organizations as small as SAS through the, the, the sphere of NGOs into businesses, into government. And everyone's looking at these toolkits. I think we've got to be careful not to create a, a new unsustainable economy with new, mm. new challenges, um, you know, which could come along um, from some of the so-called sort of green industries and certainly from the blue economy. I don't think we can do what we've done to the land to the sea right like the blue economy feels like we're just going to carve up the sea into blue fields right they're all going to be sort of monocultures and and um and and pretty devoid of the natural life we yeah. need i think that the, the the question is is this balance between 30 percent where almost humankind can't do anything anymore you know and even maybe recreationally maybe we should say look we can't we can't chop down chop down you know um coastal forest to, to find a way through to get into a new wave we've got to go look we're not going to go so yeah. then we're not going to trample over that reef we're not going to do that <clears> because that needs to just be that reef needs to exist with the waves on it by itself without anyone mm. um, and we'll go surfing somewhere else we'll go to trestles and, and and join everyone else there um so i think i think we've got to really have some some new thinking on it um, of what we can and can't do where we can and can't go and what what sustainable industries will look like and um and what our expectations are you know mm. we just live in a time when when we could sort of well like a lot of western sort of countries you know can consume just what they want when they want you yeah know, it contributes to food waste and everything it's like yeah well i won't eat what's in the fridge because you know i can just buy yeah. what i feel like yeah it's well it's, like, it's, uh, it's 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 so it's so slick the thing that's been built i mean at least on the surface yeah. you you know weirdly I, I sort of i have a sort of a sort of something keeps sort of riffing in my mind of like of that the, the paradox of like if you know you feeling sort of comfortable and clean and content in your own environment makes you feel that the the, the wider environment right. is good yeah but it's not necessarily maybe there's a thing of sort of a bit of discomfort and not having stuff yeah. at, that, that will reconnect you with going oh actually the you know i've got a relationship with nature i am part of nature and and, and i need to have that you know it's a bit like you know, people vigorously cleaning their houses with all sorts of toxic sort of pr 100%. products going, oh, look, my house is it's clean, clean and it's nice and, and so it. the world is good. Yeah. And you go, oh, actually not. It's like you look on the back of the fairy liquid bottle. What's yeah. it got? It's got the orange cross with a fish dead in it. Right. Going toxic to marine life. You know. And we're putting that, like millions of households around the country are putting that down their sink yeah. every single day. Yeah. I mean, how... How is that possible? Well, it doesn't, well, you know, and again, we're, you know, we're, we are made up of, you know, we've had more non-human cells in us than human, you know, yeah. we're, 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 
we are, ba- you know, yeah. we're ba- micro bacteria and it's billions around. Yeah. We are a living thing. Yeah. And yet, again, I think we've been through this kind of consumerist, you know, the last three decades or so, you know, we, we again, we, this idea, this story of, of how we exist in this world has, I think, just been so separated from yeah. how life works. And this is, I guess this is the conundrum, isn't it? Because it's, 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 it's this, we're in this moment where, and I think particularly with the pandemic, at least my, you know, my sense and the, you know, watching around in the UK, what was going on was, you know, many people who could stay at home were also starting to notice the craziness yeah. of, you know, business as usual, life yeah, before yeah. lockdown. They were starting to see their waste consumption because of stuff coming into the yeah, house. Yeah, they yeah. were starting to notice they had a bit more money on mm. them because they weren't traveling every day and buying stuff, you know, because you're effectively, you know, we're running on nature every day. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. kind of what's going on, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. But, um, and so you kind of felt like, well, we've learned a lot in this time. Yeah. I think particularly those, you know, again, industries, all these industries, et cetera, but they're all humans. They're all mm. humans with kids yeah. and family that are powering these organizations. You kind of think, okay, what have we learned in this space that might, can we open up this discussion? Because I think that's what, I think that's the thing. I think that's what more people are looking for is just how do we just have open, honest, no, we don't have to have the answers for this stuff either because yeah. it's complicated shit. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's interesting, like just on, on a couple of those points. I mean, I don't think even for these big band industries, because everyone's indoctrinated, they're not waking up going, okay, what I'm going to do today is destroy the yeah, world. Yeah, I'm going to be a right old bastard. You know, the, 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 you know the, the, the head of Exxon or the head of Coke is going, right. actually, my sustainability people have said to me, everything is good. And yeah. so we're all being spun a yarn on it. Um, you know, it, it doesn't mean the damage isn't happening. And, and, and it's sort of weird because, you know, you know, humankind, simultaneously we go, like, we're the most ingenious, brilliant, like sophisticated organisms on the planet but yet if the supply chains break down we're all screwed right and that's like, what happened my, my cat is more sophisticated yeah, than me like if, if they break down my cat uranus <laughs> will just go and go out and go is that what your cat's called uranus yeah. brilliant i'm fu- i'm totally fine i'm gonna go and eat some mice <laughs> yeah meanwhile i'll be starving we're screwed eating daffodil yeah. bulbs from the garden <laughs> you know it, it, it's so weird that we're all like we're all on a knife edge yeah. with this stuff, and so like you know, I think that's a challenge for government. Well, that's what the pandemic showed us. There's yeah. no resilience in this system no. because unless it's going at, in fifth gear, right, and it's churning yeah. and extracting and b- burning vast amounts of energy materials, it doesn't work. No. So we stopped it, and we realised that it's powered by millions of people. A lot of people who are in shit conditions, yeah, yeah. You know, vulnerable yeah. as hell, are actually powering this thing. I think there's been a few like really, you know, big signposts, on, 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 you know, through the pandemic. Of course, I mean, first and foremost, I think the, the pandemic showed, you know, really just how fragile um, our, our society is, um, um, how fragile we all are yeah. individually, you know, um, and how dependent we are on, on nature. Um, of course, there are, you know, points of view that, you know, think that, that the pandemic came out of, uh, you know, it's a whatever they call it, a zoonotic, zoonotic yeah. disease, you know, that it came out from being too close to, to, to nature, you know, crashing uh, and, you know, you know, uh, and, and um, drawing a line that, that means we're not getting that ecosystem service that protects us by having wild forests and wild ecosystems, you know, thriving in their own way. Um, and, you know, what, what's more to come from that? But I think it's, it's shown some other sort of signposts. I mean, there's a couple of big ones for me. Um, as you say, you know, our economy is underpinned by, um, by you know people working in pretty horrific conditions in parts of the world that we don't necessarily see um it's modern day slavery things that we have come to take for granted as consumers yeah. sadly you know are often built on a pretty you know bad lives of other people um and that's something we will have to start to reconcile this decade what does that actually mean what does you know what do these manufacturing hubs in in um in other parts of the world really mean for 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 the you know for world health and our collective health as a society um i think also there's there's things you know we've seen it through the prism of plastic pollution um we we saw it you know just a couple of weeks ago with everything that's you know supposedly being recycled that's been taken to turkey and like chucked around you know yeah so those those things that we saw as convenience you know are just being taken somewhere else and and chuck dump somewhere to, else to an environment and then we all have the audacity to go well it's only a few countries that are causing the plastic pollution crisis look at turkey terrible they can't even manage their waste and you go no it's not their waste it's our waste yeah and 
and um, of course they can't like manage it because they haven't got the infrastructure to. Um, and so, so for me, um, for me, there's some some really stark things. But sort of starkest of all is about this 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 sort of thing of, you know, will we solve the crisis by individual choices, um, or will do we need just these these major shifts that are driven by a collective unrest about what's happening to the world? Um, because we saw, of course, we've not not been able to travel anywhere. You know, none of us have been able to go on holiday, and lots of us, even environmentalists. You know, we'll step onto a plane once in a while and go somewhere to try and recharge. It's a great privilege and luxury, but one which brings like damage with it. But during this pandemic, when none of us could do that, airline emissions only went down, I think, 5% or something. Or five, emissions went down 5% collectively. Yeah. And so, it's, you know, that's everyone not doing that. Yeah. That's everyone making that choice because they were forced to, not traveling. And so it, it indicates to me that actually the, the big thing is not necessarily individual choices of do I go to, you know, to, to, um, to Spain for my holiday, but it's actually the whole system that everything's built on and that, that needs to reform and change. We live on a life-giving rock called Earth, hurtling through space. How bonkers is that? You're listening to the Spaceship Earth podcast. I mean, I was reading. I mean, you, you'll know that you'll know this more. But I, I was reading about again about the the sort of tankers. You know, the the emissions from tankers. Mm, that's, yeah. You know, which are shipping all of our yeah. stuff around the world. And yeah. Have these extraordinary. And they're using also the sort of like the, you know, the, the lowest grade, the most toxic mm. kind of um, fuels. Yeah. That would otherwise be. Yeah. That can't be sold actually to any yeah. other sector and. Like you say, yeah. there's there's a there's a there's so much that's underpinning that way of yeah. being, isn't there? Yeah. Even when the personal sacrifices are being made to yeah. what we think is causing the problem, it's still absolutely. Yeah. And then and then you see this twin thing of like the the habitat destruction that's releasing carbon and reducing environmental resilience. You know that 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 um that that extraction um, and the damage. You know things like bottom trawling of of the ocean, catastrophic. Mm. Um, apparently you know, releasing more more CO2 than all of the aviation industry, you know, annually, um, something that can be, you know, stopped. Um, and um, and then, you know, the, 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 the inputs, you know, of course, we're all, you know, we're all, you know, putting, you know, carbon dioxide back in. So not only are we not absorbing as much because we're taking away that resilience of these ecosystems and, you know, damaging them outright, but we're also pumping more in. So it's this double sort of multiplier effect that we're going through. Um, but, um but yeah, it's an interesting night. People have sort of woken up. But I think, you know, what I see around me weirdly, and I've said it in a couple of sort of presentations recently, is, you know, now feels quite a similar time to 1990 when this organisation first started. Right. You know, it was a time of um, sort of sweeping environmental laws coming in from Europe and from our parliament, you know, um, on water quality, of course, because that's what we were campaigning around. But on many things, stuff that was limiting businesses from doing damage to a certain degree. There was a time of social and civil unrest. You know, we saw the poll tax riots. People, you know, didn't want those, you know, unfair, you know, economic situations. Um, we, um, you know, we, we, there was there was quite a lot of sort of disobedience, and that's what we're sort of seeing again now. People rising up, going, actually, we're we're worried, we're scared, we're terrified, we want change. We're going to keep coming together, and I do think, I do think, even if the action isn't fast enough yet, I think governments are listening because they have to this is a this is an election winning or losing issue now um and if they don't take action on this on the big diversity and inclusivity issue on um on building a a, a better future for young people they're not going to stick around for re- very long in the current form they're in i mean we've seen a disenfranchisement of of sort of people from politics recently um and you know you know traditional parties have struggled at times and we're seeing a you know new you know we're seeing hopefully a, re- a surge in, in in different politics you know i know in the local elections the green party did for them mm. pretty pretty well recently and and these things are sort of interesting because we are in a time of change and and shift um you know similar to the 1990s and politics and policies and legislation change when people start to go we've had enough of this and there's a problem mm. you know just as you know and you look back at you know just sort of simplistic things like smoking in 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 bars 
you know, the, the government didn't go, okay, why don't we do like a voluntary measure? People can or can't smoke in the bar if they want. They said, actually, we're going to put a law in that says that it's illegal to smoke inside. And it started in certain places, then grew into other places. But that is, that is where we're going to go on environmental stuff. You know, stuff that we, you know, when I was a, when, you know, I was a, a, a youngster, you'd go to the pub and you'd expect to come home thinking of Oh, fag. God, I remember it. And, it, you know, you'd go <coughs> I and you'd on the tube sting. and having a fag. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all, my age. all of that stuff, you know, and, you know, and then the, those, those things that change, that great moment. I mean, one of the big things, smoking on the tube, to your point, the fire in 1981 right, in King's, King's Cross. Cross yeah. yeah. You know, a fag dropped on the wooden escalator and that killed, what, 31 people or something. Mm. Um, big moment of change for that. And, and so these things, these tipping points, that we see. But um, you could say to that, there are, you know, now, you know, I don't know what it's at, but hundreds of thousands of people, you know, be now dying from the impacts of climate change around the world, yeah. whether it's, you know, food shortages, flooding, extreme heat. Sure, yeah. um, but because I guess that's, I guess. But look at the, yeah. look at the slowness on, on, on cigarettes. Like, right. Like the, the science was there. Yeah. yeah. The science was brushed under the carpet. Then it was, ab- you know, above the carpet and people could see it, but it wasn't sticking and in the tobacco industry was pushing it down. It's not dissimilar to, yeah. to climate change yeah. and what's actually happening. You know, so I think it's, you know, I, I, I do think there's, there's, there's radical moves afoot at the moment. Yeah. And I think it's, it, it's going to be an exciting time. I don't know quite where it will land and yeah. how fast it will land, but. But I do expect that in ten years, at the end of this sort of this environmental decade, there's going to be things that 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 we never dreamt possible happening. You know, just as you know, for me and you showing our showing my age now, you know, we were we were pre internet and we were pre yeah. mobile phone. I remember yeah. getting my first pager. Yeah. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. I clipped to my belt. I was really <laughs> proud of it. And then if my boss wanted me, I'd get like a message going. Call your boss. I know. And I find a phone box and I call them and go, what do you want? They go, a latte, please. We used to organise raves <laughs> with no phones. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> it's just like what? You know, uh, you, you know so, um, so I think th- these you know, changes will, will, will come fast now because they have to cascade yeah. quickly. I, yeah, I get, I, and, 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 I'm, and I'm with you. I, I guess like the one thing that I'm, I'm, I'm exploring a lot at the moment and I'm really interested in and love to see what, you know, where, where, where your thoughts are on this is this, because everything we're speaking to demands radical collaboration. It demands humility. It demands the fact to, to let go of the, this idea of control and certainty, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. At, the, at the highest level, because this is part of the problem, I think, is this, this kind of ego and power mm. and, and not, not being able to, to say, I don't know, you know, yeah. or, yeah, you yeah. know, uh, to, and to be able to work with this uncertainty right now. Also, then the diversity piece to be mm. able to draw not just on you know Western uh, you know intelligence and mm. and whatever, but what about all you know all these indigenous cultures who for thousands and thousands of years yeah. have figured out how to work in harmony with the living world, yeah. right? I mean, they've their civilizations have been around yeah. way longer than the modern Western human civilization has been around, and they've done very little damage. The point is, it's not either or; it's all of it. And, yeah. and, and if we go back to this, you know, we were chatting earlier about, you know, what does, what would a, a, a what would a, a new form of economy look like if it was, if it was based on how, you know, natural ecosystems yeah. work? Like if we were going to design that based on those kind of principles, you would be looking for, you know, optimizing, not just maximizing growth all the time. You yeah. would be looking at, you know, very strong local yeah. Uh, cultures um, mm. you would be looking at um, you know you'd have a different form of scale you would you would you know some some things you would just you know you just say you can't you cannot scale these kind of ideas if they're materials based or whatever and you would be looking at diversity of intelligence and knowledge you know in that system you'd be drawing on everything yeah. uh, and, 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 and representing all of that yep. um, and you would have a much more open uh, decentralized way of decision making power to, to flow you mm-hmm. wouldn't be trying to hold it in the center all the time and sure, so i yeah. guess i guess that's the thing it's like because again if we are to shift to something then it's like children right i mean yeah. you've got kids i've kids right we continue at least in 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 our dominant western cultures if it wasn't for organizations like yourselves and others who are trying to bring stuff into the systems and again this isn't a rant at teachers yeah, yeah, it's yeah, amazing yeah. but the point is we are educating kids still in a way that's lining them up for a high carbon world that yeah. won't exist. Yeah. We're still educating them on command and control, get ahead, yeah. Yeah. Um, comp- competition, yeah. um, 
uh, and and all of these things are, you know, so we just keep we keep sort of fueling mm. this way of being, mm. and when and we're almost not allowing um, kids, our, our, our sort of our, our, our sort of the humans down the line, to yeah. sort of develop in a way where they could thrive in this uncertainty yeah. that's coming. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. so there's this sort of like, when, when do we get to the point where we actually, you know, when the, when the narrative in our culture shifts to that of, we are in this mm. hyper-connected, interconnected, complex world, what we do over here impacts over here. Do you mm. know what I mean? It's, a, it's a quite a shift because we have sort of, we are in, still in this story of separation, we, you know, that, we, that what we do is separate from the natural world, you know, yeah. and it's shifting. And of course it's shifting and it's changing fast, yeah. but still at our media level, our dominant sort of cult, you know, cultural stories, we, you know, we can have, you know, you look at a newspaper, you can have an article on, you know, ecosystems are cla- in the Guardian, right? You can have an article on the front page, which talks about the collapse of ecosystems yeah. and, you know, driving climate. Yeah. And then the, and alongside it, you can have, you know, GDP is expected to grow by 2% or whatever, right? Yeah, and you're like, yeah. well, what's drive? You know, one is driving the other. Sure, 100%. Um, so I guess it's just like, that's, that's the bit I'm interested in. You know, I, I don't know. It, it, you look like, yeah. like I, um, like I, I, I hear you. Um, like, and I, like I, like I uh, agree, you know, you know, our kids are coming into a world that is, that isn't, isn't actually working. Uh, and one in which we're all super, super fragile. Um, and, you know, coming back to that sort of local piece, you know, and, and I, I feel really grateful, you know, we're down here in Cornwall and I'm, a, you know, I feel privileged. I run something I love on an issue I love. And I live in a great community and a community that still has some sort of vestiges, you know, whether it's here in, in Wheel Kitty or the road I live on, um, you know, in Truro, you know, where people support each other, yeah. they look out for each other. Um, they, you know, you can go knock on each other's doors and ask for s- help and support. Um, and that's nice, really good. Um, and that's sort of the way the world should be. And I think we've seen an era, you know, we've seen this sort of, I mean, of course, we've seen in our lifetimes this boom of sort of big industry and industry has worked out. How do we extract money from those communities? How do we get the wealth out of those communities and into our bank account? And it's, you know, the idea of a few um, taking from the many. You know, they're, they're, they've, they're, they've come onto the high street. They work out how it's better. You know, they've, you know, they've got the resources to build their chain of coffee shops that can displace the local, yeah. the co- local coffee shop that, you know, may have still brought coffee in from whatever foreign, you know, foreign country who would still be keeping that money that in the economy. The profits yeah. ultimately would be redistributed yeah. within the community. And, and, and big businesses worked out how to siphon all of that off. Um, and they do it, you know, day in, day out around um around our town cities and and villages um and it's a vastly different ecosystem to when you know even when we grew up it wasn't it wasn't like that there were there wasn't uh you know i, I think i remember the first one of the first mcdonald's ever i think it's Kent, kentish town high street is one of the first ones actually and i remember all of these things and you know those were i remember it because kids used to go there it was like a treat for a birthday it was like you'd go to McDonald's and now it's like, like an everyday thing yeah. on every corner, you know, yeah. uh, Starbucks <coughs> and McDonald's. Uh, and now it's you know, delivered Acosta, to your door. <laughs> you know, uh, and, it, it, and it's like sort of terrifying how they've, they, they've perfected this tool of extracting mm-hmm. a, a, the nutrients, the money from, from communities, you know, and, and that's something in, and it goes back, it goes to your point. And on from di- the soils. <laughs> yeah, from, your, from diversity and, in, mm. it, and sort of inclusion because actually, you know, what we need to do is like, we need to have this redistribution of wealth. You know, all of those sort of subsidies and tax breaks for big business, you know, means that they can function and do this nutrient extraction from all of our communities. But let's let's break that up. And to, to use the uh, sort of a topical example, the fishing industry, all of those big, you know, you know, fishing fleets, the industrial super trawlers that are subsidized to the tunes of billions of pounds every year around the world. You know, we shouldn't be subsidising those. We should be subsidising the local, more sustainable 100%. fishing communities. Break the monopoly 100%. on the, the fish stocks, as it were, and redistribute that to the communities that rely on it. And that's the way we should. We should look at all business like that. We need to go look. We can't have it all centralised. Yeah. It doesn't work. You know, people don't. You know, pe- people won't benefit in the long time. It's not sustainable. Yeah. It won't be. And this is like this is to speaking to you know these ideas of like bioregional development, right? And like what is what is you know what is each place? What is that place? calling for what's what's what is it about yeah yeah how do we actually design from that and not try and just drop these ideas across the world yeah which is that and of course again you know that's the thing i think this is the thing once you 
once you because I know this is complicated, but at least the, in my experience, like when there's an acceptance of the complexity, when people accept that we are, you know, in the shit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we can't continue with these kind of models, and when there's an openness to uh, uh, explore a redesign in yeah. an in an inquiry based way at, through, you know, through co-creation, designing with communities, yeah. with different stakeholders, shit happens very quickly. Yeah. And actually people are participating in these processes. Yeah. There's a little bit, you know, we, we spoke a little about the, about the XR thing. And the one thing I would say of something like XR is this, this trying to bring the Citizens Assembly in yeah. as, as a tool. Awesome, and yeah. it works. Yeah. And, and again, the, the basic thinking is the problems are too complex for, you know, a bunch of politicians to mm. solve, right? Yeah. We're in a world now way too complex. The, the, you know, we're seeing the impacts of these decisions that we've been making, mm-hmm. these ways of seeing the mm-hmm. world, which at the time we thought were amazing and they did matter. And we, we developed a lot yeah. of these systems because we needed them. But again, it's that humility of saying, you know, just because it worked for, for decades, yeah. it, you know, we have to accept Absolutely. it's over, yeah. you know, let's move on. And I, I believe there's huge regenerative potential when, when we accept, when we show that something is, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's complex, yeah. but we need to work together to solve it versus holding that story centrally and sort of refusing to, you know what mm, I mean? Yeah. To, and, I, and I'm interested in the media. So, I mean, you do a lot of work with media, but, uh, but again, because there's, there's, a, there's a part of me, particularly, I can only speak for this country, but, you know, it, it concerns me. And I think, I believe we will see in, in the decades to come, I, I think we'll see legal cases against media yeah. for, 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 you know, for, for basically uh, not revealing what's really going on, yeah. like playing games yeah. with the science and playing ga- and confusing yeah. people. Yeah. Um, Look, and I mean, I mean, even more so through through social media and, you know, it's, you know, the, the scandal of how we're controlled. I mean, like I think back to the, 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 the philosophy books that I read as part of my, you know, degree and, you know, the, this question of free will. Um, you know, there's no free will in social media. You know, they, 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 they decide what you see, right. who you see, how you see it, when you see it, how much of it you'll see. And they'll decide what you buy and don't buy, what choices you'll make. I mean, it's so sophisticated. Right. And, you know, I, I, it, it sort of terrifies me. Not that we're not connected or not. I mean, you and I are connected to it. Yeah. And, you know, we'll see what each other do. And we're, we're part of a, a shared sort of echo chamber, which, you know, which, you know, which may bring us closer and closer together. But, you know, it, 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 in a way, like, I think, I think all of that is, is really difficult for creativity, for new choices, for, of course, for diversity and inclusivity. Um, and, you know, you're, you're, you're going in tighter and tighter concentric circles to mm. a place that Mark Zuckerberg wants you to get to, not that you've decided you want to get to. And those brilliant times, you know, when you and I, you know, grew up, when you'd, Sort of buy up, you know, you'd wait for a single to come out and then you'd wait for an album to come out and you'd listen to the heart album. It doesn't happen anymore. You're like on, you don't even know, you're just on sort of Spotify going, I'm yeah. like listening to stuff that Spotify's decided I like and actually I do like it yeah. and it feels quite good. And I carry on just listening to this endless playlist of stuff it believes I like and it's sort of right. Yeah. Well this, this is, well, this is, I think again, and for me, this is the, again, it's not a, it's not an either or. These things have brought us all these extraordinary possibilities as you say, like these connections, these the ability to discover others yeah, and see yeah, things. And, yeah. But the point is, again, for me, it's like, I, I actually, I look at this because we talk a lot, oh, we're so connected, but I actually think these things are disconnecting us from life. You know, oh, from, 100% from agree. From the ability yeah. to understand how the non-human world works, how our own fellow human yeah. beings, are, because we can distract, we can, we can, I, I actually see it again with my, 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 you know, one of my teens just, just the ability for flakiness, just to not to commit to anything. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because you can just cancel anything, yeah. you know. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and so I think, and I, and, and I guess that's what, what it is. There's this, extra, we've had these, all these extraordinary possibilities at our fingertips. And we're sort of on this kind of constant sort of story of progress, yeah. you know. And even when you talk about, I mean, you could talk about anything in the past by a lot of our population is almost seen as, Oh, you don't want us to go back to that, you know, yeah. or, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, we've got to that point where anything behind is almost seen as like, well, you know, this is progress, and yeah. it's kind of like, I guess that's it. It's just, you know, the, we're back to the diversity question, right? We, we, it feels like, how do we bring more of these ideas and things together? A, a, a thriving ecosystem, right? We spoke to yeah. earlier. 
would would have would have so many different species and relationships mm. going on yeah. and many of which you wouldn't even see or understand and i think that feels like where we are at the the, the, the opposite of where we are politically economically yeah. it's monoculture you know yeah, yeah like <laughs> I, I like i agree and i think um you know like you know diversity is about you know all of these specialists coming together at, you know in the right ways at the right time and knowing how they interact and how, how you know the best to do that knowing sort of the roles um and then um uh, and then actually exploring new things because you know I, i'll sort of give you an example from our space mm. you know and and uh, you know often we're approached about collaboration and everyone wants charities to collaborate i mean people forget that you know there's always going to be competition in any industry sure so and it's a dirty word in charity sector, but of course there's competition. You know, there's limited resources you know people have you know ideas and, and they want to get those sort of funded they want to get those out there there's always there's always a tension there but like collaboration for us like people come to us and go you should you know collaborate with x marine charity or y marine charity. we're like well sort of yes but isn't it better if we do something like with the un, un, an unusual collaboration yeah it's better for me to go right as a service answer, we're going to go and collaborate with um you know a, a charity that focuses on sort of you know inner city poverty because that would be like a, an unusual myth yeah. that would then bring different audiences together in a way that might generate different conversations. Um, and that, that for me would be the interesting collaboration. Yeah. I mean, if it's just two Marine charities coming together, it's like, well, what we, that's sort of weird. Because yeah. We're trying to do the yeah. same I, thing. I, I think a hundred percent again, yeah. I think this is the thing, these radical collaborations and, yeah. and I, I just see that not, you know, from campaigning to how we govern and yeah. how do we do politics? Yeah. You know, again, I, it, I, I look at what's going on in this country and you think single party politics it's finished, surely. I mean, it's yeah. like we need alliances. We need we yeah. need people to to disagree with with each other, yeah. but actually respect each other's values. Right? We 100%. need competing ideas working together to create something new. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I look, I, I agree with that, and I, like I also think, you know, the the party politics we have is is somewhat just too binary, and yeah. it's, and it's in, in in people's perception of it. it's like you know it's a continuum, and like there there's like people far far on one side and. And there's, 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 as it slides across the scale, there's, there's degrees of things you'll agree or disagree with, with people, mm. you know, and there, I've got friends who are conservatives, liberal Democrats, green party Absolutely. members, and there are parts of stuff we really agree on. Uh, and there are parts of that we don't agree on, you know, 100%. some, some more things that we agree on, some less things, but uh, you know, I don't, don't think it's just this sort of binary good or bad or, Absolutely. or different. And, and that's just stupid because that's not how life works. Right. You know, we're all we've all got a hodgepodge of ideas and yeah. expectations um, and, um, and, and needs. And we're all, you know, we're, we're all do things. We probably all do things when we're older that as a youngster in terms of the, our political views, we wouldn't, have, you know, like, I, you know, I've got a lot of people in, you know, friends in London where I'm originally from, you know, who'd go, you know, they're sort of right on and all this, but you know, they, they go never send my kids to, private school or do whatever but they will move to a house like in the right catchment where it's like impossible to get out unless you've got enough money to get their kid into the right school yeah. you know and and, and that, that's un, that's understandable but you know it just is to my point of this sort of sliding scale and and often as you know also often as you get old uh, your views will mature and change and 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 be you know mm. be be different yeah you know and i think that in its own right shows you that it's not a a, a single binary no it's not thing. but also what you're speaking to a little bit there again is the story of scarcity and competition you know it's yeah. this the, the idea that because we all have it as parents it's yeah. like, well, oh, God, you know I, I don't might not want to but it, what happens if I don't do that you know if I don't yeah. get them into that place or yeah. or you know are they going to struggle but actually what we understand you're depriving gonna, your children but, oh god what am I going to do <laughs> you know what I mean? but actually as we fear again it's just it's nonsense yeah. because it's it's a, it's a story of of competition yeah. not abundance of yeah. scarcity not abundance you know what I mean yeah. Of not and not cooperation, yeah. um, and and it, and and these these kind of values and principles um, uh, of kindness and cooperation and creativity and experimentation. But, but everyone also does it, you know. You, like, look, even you know, like I, you know, know lots of people. You know, they'll they'll talk about this thing of like sort of, it, uh, I suppose, it, inclusivity, integration. You know, you know, like and sort of reach out. You go, well, yeah, but you all choose to go and live in Falmer rather than Camborne. Just, just talk me through it. You know, talk me through. You know, if you if you wanted to like really challenge yourself, right? Maybe you'd go. I want to live yeah. in like a, a community that's totally, totally unusual for yeah. me. 
but again, we've 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 designed that. We've designed yeah. you know wealth here. Yeah, um, totally. You know those those struggling with poverty here, and again, you know, go back to the ecosystem. Just nature wouldn't do that, right? No, <laughs> it no. would, and and you would find that the you know the the principles of generosity and reciprocity, which I can't never say that word yeah. properly, but you know, it they, they would exist yeah, if you yeah, just, yeah. you if you sort of created conditions for them to happen. Yeah. But we 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 separate and remove. But um, I think we're like I do think we're like we're feels like. <laughs> If we're not moving in the right direction, yeah. we're pointed in yeah, the right 100%. direction. You know, and, and I, look, I'm a, I'm an optimist, uh, and like I like I think like hope exists like right until your last breath <laughs> as a human, really. Yeah. You know, you go like you can still create change. Like my neighbour, he's, you know, he's um, a guy called Alex, a brilliant guy, like like full of wisdom and knowledge, and he um, had a like open. Yeah, he, he he was like a year and a half ago, two years ago. Fine, I'd have an occasional glass of red wine with him, chat in the street, beetling off to work. Um, um, and um, then he had, you know, a heart surgery. He had a heart attack and heart surgery, and he's been in bed ever mm. since. You know, uh, um, and he's and he's and he's there. Um, you know, just sort of like, like next door, and it's it, it's sort of this this sort of change that that I I sort of saw through that of like the sudden sort of shocks in life. Um, of um of of what can happen um and then people's expectations he's there reading reading in in his front window and in his books and I sort of communicate through the window and say hi to him and everything um and you know what, what how do your expectations change over life what is what is enough what do you need as you grow older what what happens when when those sudden shocks happen in anyone's life so, yeah made me think yeah and 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 a hundred percent and I you know for me um I think I think I I've you know, I, I have oscillated wildly over the last couple of decades between sort of hope and fear and, and whatever. I, I'm a b- believer in active hope. There's a yeah. great book by Jenna Macy called yeah. Active Hope. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's, you know, it's through action that we, because yeah. we see possibility. Absolutely. And, and we see things that we had no idea could exist. Or, yeah. you know, and we work with people that show us other things. Yeah. And we learn about ourselves and we learn about others. And, and so I think that's, I think that's it. I think it's just this, it's it's I, I'm with you and I see the possibility and the potential, but I guess it's just the this current sort of operating system, I think, Bill, that's yeah. what I'm more worried about. It's it's the way that currently we're we're constrained by a way of sort of thinking and organizing that seems almost impossible to shift, you yeah. know. And yet I but, think people people I think people generally would rather face into what's going on, but in a way where we are encouraged now to to participate in this yeah. redesign, but, uh, I think also we'll see how you know we'll hopefully see a domino effect of sort of hope, opportunity, industry, and uh, and you know sustainable industry sort of growing and, and and the world changing around us. And the more the more that happens, the more it will happen, and it will accelerate. And there'll be sort of tipping points through that. I sometimes think about you know whether you have a good or a bad day on on a very personal micro level. You know, you, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you can have a thing happen as you get up and go into work. Just one little thing that can flick a switch that spins you off. And yeah. you're like, oh, this is a great day. Yeah. This is great. Like, if some, somebody does something nice or like something goes your way. Maybe the lights change to green sooner than you thought. And you go, I'm on a flow now. Yeah. It's good. And it's just a tiny thing. Yeah, totally. But actually, suddenly it triggers this whole like sequence of events that means that your day turns into the best day. Maybe sometimes a less good day. But like, I think it is interesting and you, you can actually manufacture those moments too. You can go, right, I'm going to like, why does that happen? And, and if I can, if I can tr- create my own control on that trigger, I go, I'll, I'll make a good thing happen. Mm. And, and maybe sometimes that good thing happening is you doing something mm. good. If mm. you be really nice, if you're the person that goes, you know, you buy your friend a coffee or you'll be more patient and tolerant with somebody or you'll do something nice and you'll help somebody then suddenly that will trigger you into that space too. Mm. And so I think, you know, it's just an interesting thing because on the, on the macro sort of level, you know, those, those things happen too. And there'll be these, these moments that we'll see over this decade with renewable energy, with circularity, with, you know, stopping carbon emissions, with, you know, tackling the destruction of ecosystems that we might suddenly go, wow, mm. this is, this is really, really possible. And we want more of it. Mm. No, I'm I'm a hundred percent. And uh, talking about those good moments, I, I I actually caught a wave this morning for us, <laughs> and it was just out of nice. nowhere. How I've was been it? sitting there for about forty minutes, missing yeah. everything, yeah. and uh, and it was phenomenal. You know, it was just this phenomenal wave, and yeah. I was like, 
I'm so, well, first of all, it's just this enormous gratitude, you know, yeah, just yeah, like yeah, yeah. just to be yeah. out here on a Friday morning on my Todd, yeah, you know, and having a surf, and then this just you know, the, you know, you know, that sensation that drop and just thinking I don't need anything, yeah. you know, and then I, obviously then I'm, I'm, you know, incredibly lucky to be able to do that. On yeah. this Friday morning. But then it brings me back. We spoke to this a little bit on the panel last night about, you know, and this is about access and this is about all these privileges yeah. and something, but it, you know, sometimes I think the solutions to a lot of this is also about how can we help free people up? How can we help people have a bit of space in their lives mm. to connect with this mm. awesomeness? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because, um, I yeah, th- I think there's the the, yeah. the the power and the healing and the regenerative potential in actually helping us as individual humans find out who we are. Do you know what I mean? Well, look, I think like you know, like, that's a policy. You know, surely. <laughs> yeah, you know, but like I agree, and like you're talking specifically about the blue space there, and you know, I I don't think you know for me it's about these these you know this reconnection with nature. You know, it can be blue spaces and green spaces, but surfing is a particularly powerful example of it and i was out there we probably were out there together actually because i like ran down i had 20 minutes in the water but i just need to get wet I, i've only I only got wet once this week on monday morning i missed world ocean day getting wet i was too busy I, was like, I have to get in today because i know i won't get in later so i did and i got three ways i got a really nice one to end um but um but you know this I, th- I think people need to sort of see this journey happen over this decade you know it's not an absolute thing just as politics isn't an absolute thing it's not like right it shouldn't be like, I think too often through the media, bring some of these threads together, we see this binary thing. Like, mm. We're either saved or we're screwed. Right, absolutely. You know, you know and it's not going to be like that. It's right. not going to be like, it's going to be some version of, of you know, disaster, catastrophe and disaster and salvation. Sure. It's going to be a combination. And so we need to Cycles take the, of it, probably. Yeah, <laughs> we need to take the public on a journey, you know, and there, there's a few things we can do in this country. So, of course, you know, we've got the climate and biodiversity crisis. You know, we... But our rivers are in a terrible state. We should use our rivers to be the corridors of biodiversity and, and wildness and wellness for this country. We should be looking towards 2030 to have hundreds of bathing waters on our rivers, yeah. clean rivers flowing with life. Subsidise human- all this stuff. This is where yeah. we want the subsidies yeah. to go. Don't subsidise the industrial fishing. <laughs> exactly. Don't subsidise fossil fuels. Subsidise the regeneration of nature, which is fundamental we- to all business sustainability. And the regeneration of humans yeah. with it. Right? Exactly. And so, so do that on rivers. Do it with our forests and our, our parks do this great investment in nature for everyone you know and, and show people the tangible progress we're making right. on that. show them where the forests are give them the images show them how they can right. access it rewild you the know. cities i mean yeah. i was thinking like if you bought i mean we know how to do this yeah. if you you know people are suffering right now if you can if we can at least create environments where there's life you know yeah. where there's joy where the air's clean yeah. where the water's clean yeah that that's transformational you know yeah, I mean, like, and you know, some of it. I mean, you know, you look now, and I, I, we're we're really lucky. You know, we live in, you know, it's we're in wild Cornwall, and you know, the the air is you know relatively you yeah know, clean and fresh, and you know, it's a, you know, it's an amazing place to be. But you know, many people live in you know highly polluted inner yeah. cities with you know smog and and traffic and and ill health as a result. You know, but you absolutely. can. But we've seen around the world, you know, people are building extraordinary things in cities now, like buildings and apartments that are all kind of like again you know in, integrated with the yeah. natural world is so possible and again why are we de- why are we allowing house building yeah. that's going on and building these absurd things and concrete and i, I think that the the, the the bigger question is is like it, it's just a it, it's like it's a non-negotiable it? the restoration of nature like we have to do it because if we don't do it we're absolutely yeah. screwed so so government's like oh well the cost you know it's a bit high it's like well, look, we didn't say that with the pandemic. You just said, right. you know, like before the pandemic, if we said, look, could you, you know, we were all, everyone's going before the pandemic. Shit, Brexit's going to cost us 35 billion yeah, quid. Exactly. And now, <laughs> Peanuts. pandemic, pandemic, <laughs> no, no. 350 billion exactly. later, exactly. we're all fine. Fine. Yeah. We need a bit more. Exactly. And we've got it. Like, maybe, mm. maybe it's going to be, you know, um, 800 billion to yeah. do whatever we need to do in the next few years, yeah. whatever it's going to be. But, but, like the cost is going to be immeasurably higher yeah. if we don't start to take the really dramatic decisions yeah. on this stuff. And I'm not, I'm not an economist. I'm not an engineer I, and I don't want to be, but we can as an organization here at Service Against Switch point out the problem. 100%. We can connect people with those problems. We can give them voice and agency and we can facilitate action around the country. And that's what we have to do as a community and a society 100%. now. And, and I think if you, you know, you, you, you do a lot of work with the, with the youngsters coming through and, you know, 
it's a no-brainer for them. You talk, talked about this one. They can imagine. They can imagine. They have imagination still. That's, yeah. that's the other thing with this. It's almost like that's a human quality that yeah. we've almost lost the art of using. Yeah. They can imagine how to redesign yeah. buildings, cities, yeah. life. You know what I mean? And so I guess that's, again, It's because I think that's the thing. You're stir- we're stirring it up. We're creating the space for this stuff to be, to be seen yeah. and to be looked at. But um, it's the, the, the tension is because, again, we're not in a place now where it's like, oh, what else would we do? Yeah. The, the possibility is immense. <laughs> the yeah. potential is yeah. immense. Yeah. It's just this kind of like, can we just sort of let these – can folks just get out of the way a bit? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just like, yeah. here's the space. You lot get on with it. Yeah. We'll support you. Yeah. But I think the people have, you know, the power, the potential, the yeah. ideas. Yeah. Um, we could go on, mate. We but, could, um, we but, could um, go on. It's been great to talk um, to you. Really lovely. Yeah. Um, thank you. We're, no, thank you. And um, let's just finish up with, with what's going on this weekend. Yep. Because um, we're all going to be paddling out. Yeah, look, we, we, well, look we've got Joe Biden and co like down the road. <laughs> Trudeau's just arrived with his quiver of fresh surfboards. <laughs> I think he's a surfer. And, um, and you know, they're talking about stuff at G7, um, you know, decisions, you know, are going to be made here in Cornwall that will affect how we do recover from the pandemic, mm-hmm. where investments are made, how we give people equitable access to vaccines, how we restore and revive the natural world and how we hopefully create a much more sustainable or uh, not much more sustainable, a sustainable yeah, economy. Right. It's one, one of, either it yeah, is or yeah. it isn't. 100%. Um, and um and that's what needs to happen and and so we're bringing together we're we're doing a, a protest a paddle out protest you know right on brand right on message for SAS it's our heritage you know we've always protested we've always brought people together we're expecting about a thousand people down in Falmouth tomorrow morning ten thirty a.m. Gilling Bay's Beach um to uh to call for um urgent action on the ocean and climate emergency the ocean can be central to a lot of these issues uh, restoring a uh, so-called blue carbon habitats, um, which can sequester a lot of um, carbon, a huge volume of carbon, mm. but also become the nurseries um, and the regenerators of biodiversity. So that's what we've got to do. And we've got to make sure that the investment goes in there, not into subsidizing fisheries that are decimating our seas. Yeah. Um, and so we're calling on world leaders to put the ocean front and center of discussions here in G7 in Cornwall, but also at COP26 later this year. Yeah where we're going to be presenting our ocean and climate emergency petition, plus uh, delivering a manifesto that was created by youth leaders, um, youth activists who came down here a couple of days ago for World Ocean Day um, and created this great new plan, it's going to be put together. They actually got the chance to present their headlines to the Secretary of State for the Environment, George Eustace, and the Shadow Secretary of State, Luke Pollard, um, on that day, and some other really great people, uh, the Prime Minister spokesperson on COP26, Allegra Stratton. So we had some punchy people, but the most important thing was it was the the youth voice. Mm. Um, that they're saying, look, this is change we want to see happen, happen this year um, and this decade. Amazing. And, ju- and, and just to ram that message home for any folks that still haven't quite sort of figured out this, you know, the importance of the ocean when we're talking about a climate emergency, but th- this is our life support system. Yeah. It produces... You know, phytoplankton produces oxygen every second breath we take. Wherever yeah. we are, we live in a busy city, wherever that's, we're in relationship with the ocean. It's, it's sucking out the, it's taking the most of the heat from yeah, climate it's so our far. It's, it's, right. it's, it's our thermostat. And it's at its max, right? Yeah. And, um, uh, and look, we've, we've got to do everything we can now. This is our, you know, this is our shared mission. Yeah. We all rely on, on the ocean. We all rely on a healthy planet. And uh, it is the number one priority. Nothing else happens if we don't get that right there's no there's no sustainable business on a planet that's right. screwed there's no you know there's no diversity and inclusion if yeah. we don't get this right so we've all got to come together now in this decade to make it happen hugo thanks so much um, thank you very much i always i always finish my little question here you know I, i've sort of started this podcast i love the metaphor of the spaceship earth that yeah we're sort of you know we're all part of this thing and you know we've been i guess at least in the last you know, definitely in the last few decades, we've become more passenger-like on this yeah. on this spaceship. So I always explore this idea of becoming crew yeah. on the spaceship. What does that, for you right now, 2021, what does that suggest or what, do you, what does it bring to mind for you? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what it brings to mind for me. Um, there was a thing I was fascinated by as a kid. There was, a, there was an experiment, it's like pre-Eden Project, it was way before, it's like this, this biome they built in the desert of all the ecosystems. They had a little coral reef, they had a little jungle, they had a little desert and everything. And they put six people in there. It was like, we'll get right, we'll self-regulate. And like thinking within a month, it was like overrun with ants and the carbon dioxide levels were off the Richter and they couldn't survive and they had to come out. 
and that's where we're at like on this planet if we're not careful so like that small small thing and that's about you know it is about our shared actions we can all take radical action every day it's really important not necessarily because that will fix the problem but if we connect all of those actions together politicians and the change makers people who will change these systems will act because their jobs are on the line if they don't so i think we can all take action every day amazing beautiful and i love i love the uh, we, last night, so we, we become radical humans not yeah. consumers <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Good. thanks dude thanks, man love his Cheers. chat So I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Hugo Tagholm, what a human Hugo is. Um, if you're fascinated by or want to know more about Surf Skin Switch, I highly recommend just becoming a member. The work they do is so critical. Um, you know, not only are they helping mobilise people from, you know, in communities from the cities to the coastlines, but they are, you know, really, really trying to shift these systems which are creating havoc in our natural ecosystems, in our rivers, in our ocean um their work is key and um really really fun creative interesting um movement to get involved with so do check them out and if you want to know a bit more about service against sewage you could maybe listen to episode 17 of this podcast uh where i was in conversation with one of the original founders of service against sewage 30 years ago the amazing chris hines right uh it's that time again where i'm going to say if you enjoy this podcast um, what you could do, which would be make me very happy, is give it a review or a rating um, on your podcast provider. Apple Podcasts is a is a good one as well. But whatever your podcast provider, the reason I ask for that is because reviews, which can take like literally less than a minute to uh, to write, um, they get found. It means the podcast gets. Uh, surface to more people when they're searching so um that'd be super useful or if you think someone you know might like this episode or another episode send it to them or share it or post it that would be amazing um i'd be super grateful for that okay um likewise if you want to keep up to date i've got the monthly newsletter it's monthly ish it doesn't always go out every month because Hey, you know, I'm just a struggling human, but um, you can you can sign up to that on the website at uh, which is the spaceship dot earth. Um, follow us on Instagram at the spaceship dot earth. Uh, I think that's a, the only kind of main self promotion. Right, I'm going to play out with a track. It's a gorgeous track from 2017. It's called Blurred. It's by Kiasmos, and this is the Bonobo remix. So. Take good care of yourself out there and the loved ones around you and the more than human world, which supports all of us. Until next time, peace and out.